Hello students, I welcome you to this class. Here we will discuss a lesson in English for students of class 10. The name of the poem is The Frog and the Nightingale. It is written by Vikram Seth. I am your teacher Ruchika Gupta. Here we will discuss the explanation of this poem and the literary devices. Over here we will cover stanzas 16 to 27 and then we will discuss the literary devices. So this is the second part of the video. If you want to see the first part where we have discussed stanzas 1 to 15, the link is given down in the description box. So let us begin. Stanza 16 But I can't sing in this weather. Come, my dear, we'll sing together. Just put on your scarf and sash. Coo a quash quash. Sash here means a long piece of cloth that you wear over the shoulder, usually as a badge of honor. Here you can see in this image also, this person is wearing a red colored ribbon over the shoulder. This is a sash. So similar sash was given to the nightingale by the frog because she was a student. She was taking training from him. Initially as it was raining and the nightingale did not want to sing in such bad weather, it told the frog that it did not want to sing because it said that the weather was unfavorable for it to sing. But what did the frog do? The frog forced the bird. He said, we'll sing together. And he told her that in order to protect yourself from the rain, you can wear your scarf and you must also wear the sash that I have given you. And then he started singing. Kuoa, quash, quash is the sound made by the frog when he started training the bird. So in this stanza, we come to know that as it was raining, the nightingale refused to sing and she said that I cannot sing in such weather. But the frog forced her and the frog said that we'll sing together and you can just wear your scarf to protect yourself from the rain and also wear your sash that I have given you and he started singing. The next stanza, stanza 17. The frog and nightingale journeyed up and down the scale. For six hours still she was shivering and her voice was hoarse and quivering. The meanings first Scale means a sequence of musical notes. So as the frog was giving training to the nightingale bird, he trained her to sing different high and low notes of music. The next word is hoarse. Hoarse means rough. And quivering means unsteady, shaky. So now here the poet says that the frog started the bird's training in music. And what did the frog do? He made her sing continuously for six hours. And he made her sing up and down the scale. That is, he made her sing high and low notes of music. This was unusual for the nightingale and so it was tired. Then he says she was shivering. She was feeling shaky and unsteady and her voice also became rough and it was unsteady. So what happened with the poor nightingale bird? It got tired because of the long hours of training and added to it, it did not want to sing in the rainy weather and it had opposed to the frog earlier but the frog had forced the nightingale to sing and he made her sing high and low notes of music which was unusual for her and all this added up and took a toll on the nightingale bird. She started shivering, her voice became rough and unsteady. The next stanza Though subdued and sleep deprived, in the night her throat revived and the sumac tree was bowed with a breathless, titled crowd, owl of sandwich, duck of Kent, millard and milady Trent. So over here subdued means sad, depressed, feeling low. 
Deprived means lack of something. When you face the lack of something, that is being deprived of something. The next word is revived. Revived means improved, regained its strength. The next word is bowed. Bowed means bent forward due to being overcrowded. So in this stanza, what the poet is saying? He says that although the nightingale was sad, depressed and had not got adequate sleep, so it was sleep deprived. It had lack of sleep. But still, during the night time, her throat got better. In the previous stanza, we had come to know that as she had sung for six hours in the rain, her throat had gone hoarse and unsteady. But now he says that her throat revived. That means it became better. It improved. And so what happened again? The next night, there was a concert at the sumac tree. So once again, the nightingale sang. And he says, what kind of an audience had come to hear the nightingale's concert? He says the sumac tree was bowed. Means there was a huge crowd on the tree which had gathered to hear the nightingale's concert. And he says it was a breathless, titled crowd. Titled crowd means royal gathering. And then he tells us the names of the royal people who had attended the concert. Owl of Sandwich, Duck of Kent, Mallard and Milady Trent. Now, can you just try to gain some similarity? What the poet is saying, he is referring to historical persons. Earl of Sandwich was a very famous personality. Here you can see him. So, Earl rhymes with owl and that is why he is referred to an animal owl and when he says owl of sandwich, he wants to say that he was a royal creature. The next is similar. He says duck of Kent. We all have heard about Duke of Kent. Here you can see the Duke. So Duke is similar to duck. And in order to refer to an animal, he has replaced Duke with duck. And he says duck of Kent. Similarly, Millard and Milady. This is also similar to my lord and my lady of Trent. And so he has replaced my lord and my lady with Millard and Milady. And he wants to show that they were royal animals who had gathered to hear the nightingale's song. So in this stanza, the poet says that although the nightingale was very sad and depressed and it was facing lack of sleep, but during the night time, her throat became better. And so once again, it prepared for the concert. Then he says that the sumac tree was full with a huge gathering of royal animals who had gathered to hear the nightingale's song. Then the poet tells us who were the royal animals who had gathered there. There was the owl of sandwich. Here he refers to earl of sandwich. Then there was the duck of Kent with reference to Duke of Kent and then there was Millard and Milady Trent with reference to my Lord and my Lady of Trent. Now we see the next answer. Then he says some more creatures who were there to attend the concert. He says Martin Cardinal Mephisto and the Coot of Monte Cristo. Ladies with tiaras glittering in the interval sat twittering. And the frog observed them glitter with a joy, both sweet and bitter. Now again, Martin, Cardinal Mephisto and Coot of Monte Cristo are references to historical persons. Then he says, ladies with tiaras glittering. What is a tiara? Tiara is piece of jewelry which women wear on the head. It is made of gold and precious stones. So as the crowd which had gathered for the Nightingale's concert was a royal crowd. was So the ladies were wearing beautiful jewellery and they were wearing tiaras. And the tiaras as they had precious stones in them and they were made of gold, they were glittering, they were shining. Twittering means talking to each other. Then he says that as 
there was an interval in the concert all these royal people were chatting with each other then he says what was the reaction of the frog on seeing such a royal crowd who had gathered to hear the nightingale's concert he says that the frog observed them glitter so he was very observant and he saw these royal people with a joy both sweet and bitter so the frog had mixed feelings when he saw these royal people he had mixed feelings of happiness and jealousy why was he happy why was his joy sweet because as there were so many people for the concert he was earning lot of money and so he was happy because he was gathering a lot of money and why was his joy bitter why was he feeling jealous he was jealous of the nightingale's popularity and as he had never got such a good such a huge audience for his song he was jealous of the nightingale bird so we come to know that the frog had mixed feelings when he saw such a royal and such a huge crowd for the nightingale's concert he was happy because he was making a lot of money but he was jealous of the nightingale's popularity the next stanza 20 every day the frog who had sold her songs for silver tried to scold her you must practice even longer till your voice like mine grow stronger in the second song last night you got nervous in mid flight mid flight means in the middle of the song so here the poet tells us that every day the frog who sold the nightingale's songs for silver that means he sold the tickets for the nightingale's concert where people gathered to hear the nightingale's melodious songs and he earned silver that means he earned money against the nightingale's melodious songs and on the other hand what did the frog do every day the frog scolded the bird so we come to know that the nightingale was a poor bird although it sang such melodious songs it was so worthy still this frog he was so rude so harsh on one hand he earned money out of the concerts at which the nightingale sang and on the other hand he would scold the nightingale bird and what did he say to the bird he said you have to practice even longer because your voice is not very strong and you must make your voice grow stronger like my voice and then he would tell her that in the second song that you sang last night you got nervous in the middle of the song so this is how the frog would scold the nightingale bird every day so every night the frog earned money out of the tickets that he sold for the nightingale's concert and every day he would scold her for not singing in a stronger voice and for getting nervous in the middle of her songs now we see the next stanza and my dear lay on more trills audiences enjoy such frills you must make your public happier give them something sharper snappier we must aim for better billings you still owe me 60 shillings so here trills means using complicated musical notes the next word is billings billings means earnings earning more money so in this stanza what does the frog tell the nightingale he says that you should use complicated musical notes and fancy means of singing because the audience likes all that and then he says audiences enjoy such frills such fancy songs fancy notes in singing and then he says that you should try and sing in such a way which appeals to the public because he wants that more and more people should come to hear the nightingale's song so that he can earn more and more money he says that you should sing sharper and snappier fancy notes of songs so that they appeal to the audience 
and then he says that our aim is to earn more and more money because you still have to pay me 60 shillings for the training in music that I am giving you. So in this stanza, the poet gives us a detail of what the frog tells the nightingale bird. The frog tells her to use more fancy notes in her songs so that the audiences enjoy such notes. And then he says that you should try and make the audience happy by your songs so that more and more people are attracted to the concerts and we can earn more and more money. And then he reminds her that you still have to pay me 60 shillings of the training fees. So this is how the frog tries to dominate the nightingale. Now we see the next stanza. Day by day the nightingale grew more sorrowful and pale. Night on night her tired song zipped and trilled and bounced along. Till the birds and beasts grew tired at a voice so uninspired. Now here zipped means ended quickly. Now in this stanza, what is the outcome of all the things that the frog is doing with the nightingale? He says the nightingale became more sad and pale. It was disheartened because the frog continuously scolded it. And with each passing night when the nightingale performed, her song reflected her tiredness, her sadness and what the nightingale did? It would just end the song quickly. It no longer enjoyed singing the songs, but it just sang because it had to sing. And what happened? The songs zipped and trilled and bounced along. It was as if the nightingale was dragging the songs. It no longer enjoyed the songs. It no longer wanted to sing the songs. And the sadness of the nightingale was reflected in her music. And finally, all the birds and animals who came to hear the concert were tired. They were not interested in listening to the nightingale's song because it was no longer melodious. And they felt that the voice was uninspired. So finally, now the impact of the frog's actions on the bird have started showing. The nightingale's song is no longer melodious and now the animals and the birds who would come for the concert of the nightingale no longer enjoyed her songs. The next stanza and the ticket office gross crashed and she grew more morose. For her ears were now addicted to applause quite unrestricted. And to sing into the night all alone gave no delight. Here morose means sad. So in this stanza what the poet is saying? The ticket office gross crashed. That means the collections at the concert. The monetary collections at the concert reduced. Because the number of people who came for the nightingale's concert reduced as her song was no longer melodious. And what happened with that? The nightingale became very sad because now she was used to, she was addicted. She wanted applause, she wanted praise. And without the praise, without the audience, the nightingale became more sad. And now she no longer enjoyed singing all alone. So in this stanza we come to know that as the nightingale's song lost its melody, the number of people who came for the concerts reduced and the amount of money that the frog earned from the concerts also reduced. This made the nightingale very sad because now it had got used to the praise and the audience that would gather to hear the song. Now the nightingale did not enjoy singing all alone through the night. So it wanted an audience and as there was no audience, it became more sad and sorrowful. Now the frog puffed up with rage. Brainless bird, you're on the stage. 
Use your wits and follow fashion. Puff your lungs out with your passion. Rage means anger, intense anger. Wits means intelligence. Puff your lungs out means take deep breaths. Very deep breaths. Passion means strong emotions. Now as the collections at the concerts reduced, so the frog's monetary income, the money that the frog earned from the nightingale's concerts reduced, he was angry at the bird. And he was full of anger and he scolded the nightingale. He said, you are a brainless bird. He says, you don't have any intelligence. You don't realize that you are performing on the stage and you have to use your intelligence and follow the fashionable styles of singing. You have to take deep breaths and sing with all your emotions and strength and power. So that is how the frog scolds the nightingale bird when the collections at the concerts reduce and the number of people who attend the nightingale's concert gets less. Now we see the next stanza. Trembling, terrified to fail, blind with tears, the nightingale heard him out in silence, tried, puffed up, burst a vein and died. So the nightingale was trembling, it was shaking, it was terrified because it had failed to gather the huge audience at the concert. It started weeping. So the innocent bird was weeping because although it was already sad and now the frog had further scolded her. And it heard all the scolding that the frog did in silence. It remained quiet and heard all the stuff that the frog told it. And what it did? It tried to use the technique which the frog had told her. It puffed up. It tried to draw a huge deep breath. But what happened? It was not able to do that. And a vein in the nightingale's body burst. And it led to the death of the poor nightingale bird. So in this stanza, we come to see a very sorrowful thing. The nightingale bird has died. The poor bird was trembling, was shaking because it felt that it had failed in its music, in its song. And so it was crying as the frogs had scolded her. The nightingale was quiet and quietly heard all the stuff that the frog told her and it tried to use the technique which the frog had told it to do. It drew a huge deep breath but it was too much for the poor bird. A vein in its body burst which led to the death of the nightingale. In the next answer, said the frog, I tried to teach her but she was a stupid creature, far too nervous, far too tense, far too prone to influence. Well, poor bird, she should have known that your song must be your own. Here, the word stupid means unintelligent, lacking intelligence. The next one is prone. Prone means likely to suffer from when you are vulnerable. So here the frog comments on the death of the nightingale. He says that the nightingale was very unintelligent. It did not have its own intelligence and it was vulnerable, it was nervous, it was tense and it got influenced by others. So the frog is saying exactly the opposite of what the frog told the nightingale bird. When the nightingale bird was there, the frog tried to dominate the nightingale bird. He tried to teach her his techniques. But now he is saying that the nightingale was unintelligent. That's why it came under the influence of the frog. It was nervous. It was tense. It lacked confidence. And it came under the influence of others easily. Then he says that nightingale was a poor bird. It was very silly because it did not know that a person must sing 
his song in his own way. So now what he is saying that she was silly that she got influenced by the frog. So this is the main lesson that the poet wants to convey to us. He wants to tell us that we should not lack confidence. We should have confidence in our abilities and we should not get influenced or dominated by others. This is what the frog is also saying over here. He says that the nightingale was very unintelligent. It did not know that it should have sung her own song in her own way. So this is the comment that the frog has for the nightingale bird. In the next stanza, he says, That's why I sing with panache. Kuoa, koash, koash. And the foghorn of the frog bled unrivaled through the bog. Here the word panache means style and confidence. Foghorn means the loud noise and unrivaled means unopposed. So in this stanza, the frog says, that's why once again I am singing with my style and confidence. And he starts singing in his own way. The original way in which the frog sings. And he sings, he says, kuwa, kuash, kuash. And the loud unpleasant noise of the frog was once again heard in the bingle box. And he had no opposition, no competitor. The only competitor that the frog had was the nightingale bird who was dead. So in this poem we see that the determined, the confident frog, although he lacked the qualities of a good singer, still his confidence and his determination made him victorious over a melodious bird who was gifted with a good voice, with a good singing ability, but as the bird lacked confidence, as the bird was nervous, it was overpowered by this frog. Now we will see the literary devices used in this poem. The first one is the rhyme scheme of the poem. The rhyme scheme which runs throughout the poem is AA, BB, CC. The next on mat pia. On mat pia is the use of sound words like croaked is the sound made by the frog, twittering is the sound when the royal animals were chatting with each other, kuoa kuash kuash is the sound made by the frog when he is singing and when he is training the nightingale bird. The next device is repetition. Repetition is used to create a musical effect. Kuosh, kuosh is repeated day by day, night on night is repeated. It is also used to lay emphasis on something. Another important instance of repetition is in the first stanza when on word is repeated thrice in order to lay emphasis on the continuity of the frog's song. The next literary device used in this poem is alliteration. There are a lot of instances of alliteration that is the same consonant sound is repeated at the beginning of consecutive words. Bingle bog, burr sound is repeated, crass cacophony, cur sound is repeated, his hearts, her sound is repeated, night, nightingale, ner sound, toad steel stiddlers, tur, next night, ner sound is repeated, twist her tail again, tur sound is repeated, Scarf and sash, again sir sound is repeated, similarly subdued and sleep, songs for silver, second song, all these repetition of sir sound, then millard and milady, mer sound is repeated, must make, more morose, all these show the repetition of mer sound. Then the next instance is better billings, birds and beasts, brainless bird, all these have the repetition of burr sound. Then we have trembling, terrified, tried to teach, two tense. Tur sound is repeated. Tur sound is repeated and then we have she should. In this, sure sound is repeated. So in the entire poem, there are many instances of alliteration. The next device used in the poem is antithesis. Antithesis is the use of opposite words. Morning, night are opposites, dusk and dawn are opposites, now and then, up and down. 
The next device is transferred epithet. In transferred epithet, the adjective used refers to some another noun. Like he says admiring bog. Now here the adjective word admiring does not refer to the bog but it refers to the creatures of the bog. So this is a transferred epithet. The next is bled out from the sumac tree. When he says bled out from the sumac tree, the sound is not made by the sumac tree. But it is made by the frog who is sitting at the foot of the sumac tree. So this is transferred epithet. The next device used in the poem is visual imagery. The poet constructs an image, a scene in the reader's mind. When he says the sky is moonlit and a nightingale is sitting on a sumac tree singing a melodious song. A scene is set in front of the reader. The next device used in this poem is personification. Personification is treating an animal or a thing as a human being. When the frog says I wield my pen, that means the frog writes. Just like human beings write. And so the frog has been personified. That means a quality which is only for human beings has been given to the frog. Then there is allusion. Allusion is reference to a historical person, place or thing. When the poet refers to a historical or a famous personality in the poem, that is allusion. When he refers to Mozart, who was a famous musician, this is allusion. Then he refers to Owl of Sandwich and he wants to talk about Earl of Sandwich, who was a famous historical personality, this is allusion. When he says Duck of Kent, he wants to refer to the Duke of Kent. This is allusion. Mallard and My Lady Trent refers to My Lord and My Lady of Trent. This is allusion. The poet wants to say that a royal crowd has gathered to hear the melodious bird. And as the creatures were animals, so the first names have been replaced by such names of animals which create rhyming effect. When he replaces Duke with Duck, he replaces... Earl with Owl and he replaces My Lord and My Lady with Millard and Milady. The next device used in this poem is Metaphor. Metaphor is a comparison between two things without using like or as. When the nightingale says this is a fairy tale and you are Mozart in disguise, the nightingale is comparing the frog to Mozart. The nightingale says that the musical abilities of the frog are similar to that of Mozart and it is indicating a belief to his musical talent. This is a metaphor. So with this we have covered the explanation and the literary devices of this poem and this video comes to an end. Thank you.